This, I gotta say, is one of the coolest Chicago scenes that I probably have ever done. Hi everybody, it's social media producer Tom Barnes of the WGN Morning News. I'm at Madame Zuzu's here in Highland Park, so check out this space really quick. It's a tea house, um, happy Halloween. And uh, I thought I would, uh, you know, hang out with the owner of the place, Mr. Billy Corgan. How are you, sir? I'm fine, thank you very much. Happy Halloween, everyone. Happy Halloween to you. It's a, it's, a, it's a holiday that I didn't ask for when I named my band, but, uh, <laughs> but here we are all these years later. Yeah, it's almost like the unofficial mascot of Halloween in a weird way, huh? Yeah, uh, you know, we always avoided uh, the, the pumpkin image, <laughs> uh, but we claim it proudly now. Um, I guess you could say it's our own national holiday. And with COVID and all, and the fact that we can't do our normal trick-or-treating, uh, we hope you're all celebrating safely and, uh, and are having a great day. Yeah, I imagine uh, Halloween's a little bit different for you now versus, uh, you know, let's say even 10 years ago, just because you got little ones running around, right? That's a whole different experience with Halloween. Yeah, despite my elder age, I have uh, two children, five and two, and uh, so they're celebrating Halloween here today at Zuzu's. And can I show them real quick or no? Uh, I don't think I don't think their mom wants my camera. Got it. So. I just wanted to. That's why I wanted to ask. So, uh, Madam Zuzu's, you had a different spot before, and we visited you there with Anna and the Around Town crew. Tell me about this space and why the rebirth of the uh, new space. Sure. Where you know the the original space was kind of an experiment. It was only about 800 square feet, just down the road over here in Highland Park. And now we have 4,000 square feet. Um, we built a stage, which you can see if you want to whirl about. Yeah. So what do you envision what's going to happen up on that stage there? Well, I mean, I'd love to play shows, and we want to have theater and comedy and all sorts of things. Uh, but obviously with COVID right now, uh, we got to keep it real. So, uh, so we're waiting, but we've got it ready. That's got to be, uh, I mean, you open this up kind of in the middle of the pandemic, right? So uh, has there been uh, other challenges besides the one you anticipated with opening up a new space in 2020? Sure. Well, anybody who runs a, a restaurant, cafe type space knows it's a challenge. Opening the space during COVID has been a real challenge. Unfortunately, now we're back in a lockdown state again. Uh, we're fighting that, not not you know vigorously in the sense of uh, we're mad at anybody, but we just think the state needs to trust uh, the job creators here, uh, which we're one. We want to keep people employed, keep people working. We're very safe here, um, and uh, so yeah, so it's definitely been a challenge. But we looked at it as like we want to be part of the solution, and uh, and providing jobs is a big part of that. Yeah, and I've noticed that you guys you don't have the uh, indoor seating right now for obvious reasons, what you just said, but you do have it outside. And actually, for Halloween day in Chicago, it's pretty nice out. So you have, I mean, you have seating all along the whole perimeter of the building. It looks like, right? Yeah, we have plenty of outside seating. We have uh, heaters and stuff. So we're going to go as long as we can. And hopefully this uh, new lockdown won't last too much longer. And this is First Street right here in downtown Highland Park, right? Yeah, we're right off uh, the middle of downtown Highland Park, and it's great. We have a lot more foot traffic and uh, certainly a lot more customers coming in now that we're here in this new location. So, uh, you know, plant-based menu, uh, total success right out of the gate. We were very shocked because, of, co of course, with COVID, we didn't know whether people were going to be able to come. And, and w w honestly, <clears throat> we've been running at almost capacity as far as our ability to produce a food. So we're very excited and thrilled. And... We have big plans, and so you know we're sort of trying to stay on the positive side. For sure, and uh, it, you have everything from clothes to little spices and to the obvious tea. I'm just going to swing over here just so I can show the uh, front here. Um, what are your, some of your favorite things that you have on the menu that you like people to know about? Um, our, our meatball uh, sub sandwich is killer. Uh, grilled cheese. We have salads, bowls. Um, it's, it's all a chef design menu and uh, it's just been a total success and uh, you know I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a vegan eater so I eat here almost every day um, and then eventually we're also uh, just to get back to the retail yeah. we're gonna have a record store in here eventually even sell some instruments and stuff like that so it'll be kind of an emporium with lots of different stuff so this is well, most of the space you see over here where the stage is is, is ultimately going to be retail space well you got a name for the record store just yet I don't know that's a good question I was thinking about it the other day um, it's kind of a big deal. I mean, if if I were, I mean, it's a big honor to have yeah. a record. Store. We'll go. We'll go with Bill's Corner. Bill's. I like it. Bill's record corner. Uh, well, some of the uh, albums in that record store, I imagine, would be Smashing Pumpkins records and and Zwan and uh, the, your solo stuff. You're coming up on uh, 30 years in the business. 25 25th anniversary of uh, the oh. double album, right? So, what's changed for you then now in the music business? Like, what's the biggest especially in 2020? You know, I think we're entering a new age, uh, a new golden age for the music business, um, which obviously I'm a part of. I think the ability for uh, uh, artists like ourselves to reach our fans directly. Um, you know, we sell, sometimes we sell music even directly 
uh, to my fans through the Zuzu's uh, brand. Um, I, I really think uh, with streaming services, people's ability to get music in at any time, I think it's really we're at a new golden age of, the, of, of making music. So we're very excited. We'll be making music in this space as well. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't say enough good things about where the music business is headed. Yeah, you're, I was listening to a podcast that you did recently uh, just about uh, the way music was as far as the, the albums distributed back then, and waiting on reviews to release them, and you were kind of like, yeah, well, it doesn't really matter for us. You know, Critics have been what they are to us, so we're really great at doing singles, and it, it seems like with this day and age, singles is the way to really get music out there in a mass quantity quickly, sure. right? Before yeah. you even have to re complete a whole album. Yeah, well, you know, in the early days of the music business, it really was kind of one or two songs at a time, and the, and the market dictated whether or not people were interested in you. And so many ways, you were always putting your best foot forward. It really wasn't until the invention of the LP, which the music business figured out, oh, we can sell a lot more music this way. And, and even if you remember in the 50s and 60s, they didn't really care much beyond the singles. They record a lot of the other... Um, music on the album is a sort of an, an afterthought. It wasn't until the Beatles and the Beach Boys that the album became an art. And the music business thrived off that for about 50 years, and then it became cumbersome for them. So now they're back to the singles approach. So during the quarantine, everybody's had, had gone through it. Everybody's had to have made adjustments. You did some um, like animation for uh, one of the albums, right? And during the quarantine, is that something that you would have never have done because of, but you had the sure. time to do it during quarantine? Yeah, we have a new album out called Seer. It's a double yep. album. And uh, so when it was heavy COVID, you know, a few months ago, when we couldn't get together in any short, short of way and make some videos, um, we decided to do an animated series. It's kind of like, uh, I call it dystopic Scooby-Doo. <laughs> and yeah. uh, so that's good fun if you want to check that out on YouTube. It's on our uh, YouTube page, Smashing Pumpkins. And then we've gone back to making videos. So we just put out another new video, the second one from this album, which is called Ramona, which was shot actually at, at the ranch where they used to shoot Gunsmoke and where they've that's currently cool. been shooting some of Westworld. It's kind of a cool... Uh, dystopic western so uh, yeah it's a lot going on we're very excited and uh, it's a good time you know uh you know for people who are you know looking for different things to do in this different time you, you know you being at home or being with your family uh missing out on what used to be the norm like what do you miss most about touring and interacting with fans or have you found different ways to interact with fans that maybe you never would have found before because of the quarantine and really embracing zoom and embracing all sure. the electronic sure well we're lucky in that we have really good relationships with our fans so i think staying on the digital side has been easy for us but that said i think everybody right now appreciates uh, a time where we could just go out the door and go see a show uh, including like here at my tea house so i think really miss that i think we miss that freedom and i'm i'm excited to see once we get past this uh this plague here kind of how we're all going to approach i think there's going to be a greater appreciation of our freedom and, uh, and the way we celebrate our lives on a daily basis. And I think we might even see a renaissance in concerts again where people really sort of embrace the experience of going out and having fun listening to music. So I, I'm just trying to stand po on the positive side. I think there's been too much bad news in the last year or so. Yeah. And I think it just helps to sort of stay positive. And, and to anybody struggling, uh, depression and stuff, please reach out and talk to people. Um, a lot of fans reach out to me directly about what they're going through, you know, call hotlines, talk to your friends, see a, a mental health professional. It's a really important time that we work together to get everybody through this. And, uh, you know, people, you've always kind of done your thing. You know, <laughs> I mean, uh, the record company didn't want you to put out a double album when you did your first double album. And uh, you kind of told them, you know, I'm going to do what I want. And you even were surprised that you got away with it. Um, and now you kind of, you know, it seems like you have, I mean, it's your, it's your band. You have the free reign. You're doing a part two to the double album. Is that correct? Uh, we just announced uh, on the 25th anniversary of Melancholy that we're doing a sequel to our Melancholy and Machine albums, which were both kind of conceptual, mm -hmm. sort of theatrical-based works. So yeah, so we're working on that now. It's 33 songs, and so we hope when this is all done, we'll be able to stage that. And we also announced that when this clears up, we're also going to do a Melancholy theme tour where we go out and sort of perform the show, kind of like a, almost like a living musical with visuals and stuff. So yeah, we have so many plans, and uh, unfortunately, these all got pushed back. But we did take advantage of the of the anniversary of the of the of the album to kind of celebrate the album. I mean, we're lucky we made one of the biggest selling albums of all time, and uh, you know, hugely important album to us and influential to many art, other artists. And so, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's 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 weird to celebrate something in the middle of all this. But I know you almost feel guilty, right? I mean, in general, like uh, uh, you know, personally, I am. Yeah, I mean, I'm not one who works much with guilt. But there are times when you have to, you do have to stop. Like today's Halloween, you know, and yes, we're in the middle of a pandemic, and yes, we have to be careful. And um, you have to remember to celebrate. 
Yes, it's very important to celebrate. That's kind of my point is, is if you don't stop for a second, just really enjoy your life and enjoy your moment. Um, you're kind of missing out on the best parts of life. So, um, yeah, so I'm just happy to be here and talk to everybody. And, and uh, yeah. Uh, I know I'm on borrowed time, so I'll be I'll finish up in a second. But uh, you, I, I recently heard that you know the kind of the writing process style that you're in now uh, it was kind of reminiscent of to what how you wrote music back in the '90s as far as pacing and putting stuff out. Is and that kind of happened after you worked with Rick Rubin on the solo album going forward. Um, are you still kind of in that? And I mean, are people Smashing Pumpkin fans? There's there a lot more to come, I guess, is what I'm getting at, yeah, besides yeah. what you mentioned. Yeah, we're currently working, actually, on about the equivalent of about four albums at the same time, 46 songs. So, yeah. yeah so you've uh, been busy. Well, look, if, if we don't know how long this lockdown uh, uh, situation is going to continue. And uh, you know, we're just going to try to work. And I think that's also a way to um, show some, uh, I don't know, leadership that feels like the wrong word. But I think it's important to, to, to live by, by example. Sure. And so when I talk to those fans that are depressed, that are down in the dumps, they, they tell me I'm inspired by the fact that you've stayed positive through this, that you're that you're working and you're celebrating and you're and you're and you're showing what your family's going through. I think that's what I mean about we're kind of working together. We have to sort of inspire each other. You know, I, in our generation, we've never faced anything like this. It, it certainly reminds us of what our ancestors went through with the wars in the, in the 20th century, and so. Uh, yeah, I think it's just just got to sort of just try to stay clear-minded, and that's what I mean. Like a day like today, let's really celebrate. Let's have a great Halloween. Yeah, we can't trick or treat like we normally would, but like in our case, we're going to go and have a, a socially distanced party with our friends, and and the kids will get to celebrate there, and that's that's the best. And so just lean into that, just enjoy that. Yeah, I think one of the things that people you you know two types of people in 2020. It seems you know the people who've taken advantage of the fact that you can work from home and maybe not do as much work, and you know, and some people are you know the gloom and doomers, and then there are the people who are like, no man, this is the time to to work, to, you know, however that is, and to put out music. You know, I met there's a lot of bands that haven't put out any music in 2020 for one reason or another and you guys have and you will continue to do so you know is that just speaks to like you're saying as being the leader that uh you know in the alternative world of music you know with the younger bands not doing their thing and you guys doing your thing kind of showing hey let's go let's do this let's do this together let's put out new music let's put positivity in the world well we're lucky you know we live in a in a great country um, it's obviously a difficult time for a variety of reasons, politically, socially, economically for many people. And, and of course, we, we're in a major, major health crisis, which, you know, we might just be in the middle of, hopefully. Uh, it's the end. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I'm trying to say is, is just try to have the best positive mental attitude you can have. It's not to be unrealistic. We don't live in a, in a dream world. You know, like I said, we chose to open our cafe uh, in the middle of a pandemic. Why do we do that? Because we wanted to uh, show leadership in our community. We love our community here in Highland Park, uh, which is just 25 miles north of Chicago. Um, we want to put people to work. Yep. Um, and, 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 you know, and, and even just the teamwork of trying to figure out how to serve food in a pandemic, how to uh, best serve our customers. Like the other day when we found out that they were going to start locking down the restaurants again, when we, we had a meeting, we were like, okay, we're going to have to focus more on delivery. Because up to this point, we really haven't had to because we've had so many customers coming in. Thankfully, it's a beautiful day, so we have a lot of customers today who are just sitting outside. Um, and thankfully, people can come in and pick up food and still shop. But, uh, you know, like I said, we're going to try to fight a little bit here because we think that the, the state needs to let, uh, to trust uh, local businesses. I've certainly read where a lot of uh, local uh, restaurateurs are going to fight this lockdown, and I'm not saying they should or they shouldn't. What I'm saying is I think we need to have a, bit, a, a bigger discussion here because if this lockdown is going to last through the winter, that's going to put a lot of people out of work. And, and right now our state, which is one of the brokest states uh, in, in, in America, we need people working. We need people paying taxes. We need people uh, working hard. So um, that's my position. And, and like I said, that's the best way to, is to try to lead through that. So well, let's say we get past this pandemic and it's all over with and we're done. Where are the pumpkins playing first show? <laughs> <laughs> no, not to put you on a spot or anything. No, no, listen, <laughs> uh, I'll, say, I'll say it to you directly. I, I'd be happy to play anywhere for anyone for any reason. Um, it's not like I miss playing every day because I have a very full life, and, and certainly with little kids there's a lot to do. But um, I, I'm not precious about it. If the first gig I play is here, that would be great. And if the first gig I play is uh, at the United Center, I'd be happy with that too. I'm, I'm happy to play wherever. I just want to get back to where we can play concerts in a safe way. Um, people keep asking me what I think is going to be the return to concerts, and my guess is they'll probably start using stadiums again like they used to use in the 70s, put five bands on a bill, 
and you can go and socially distance and still watch a show, and they'll put 30,000 people in Soldier Field as opposed to 60. Yeah, that was my next question. It's like, what is live music in the future? Is like, is there will be permanent repercussions of live music in the future, given that we've gone through the pandemic? Well, uh, the NBA just came out and announced today that they're looking at a loss of maybe 500 million to a billion going into next season because not, they assume they're not going to be able to have fans in the stands. So I think the shifting patterns in terms of how people are spending their money, what they will spend money on, whether when or not when everything is declared safe, that they are going to go back to football games, basketball games, and concerts in the numbers that they, they used to, uh, that's a hard leap right now to assume. But we're still in the middle of it, so psychologically maybe that seems oppressive. I wish, I wish somebody had a magic wand, could wave it, and we could all just go back to the way things were, but I think we all realize now that's not going to be that simple. So as, a, as an artist and as a, as, a, as a person who runs a business, you know, I, I'm open to whatever. If at the end of the day this stage only gets used to broadcast concerts around the world, then, then I'm okay with that. It would be sad. Um, um, but then, you know, hopefully a year from now we can have 100 people in here like the law says and, and, we, can, we, can, and we can broadcast around the world. Sure. That would be optimal. Yeah. Uh, so you mentioned earlier just being a dad. That's got to be, I mean, I'm a dad myself. It's a full-time gig no matter what people say, as is being a parent in general, a mom and everything else. How do you divide up your time? Like, are there certain days where you're like, I'm going to write today? Or certain days you're going to worry about uh, your wrestling endeavors? Or, sure. like, or the restaurant is every day for right now. How, what's that like? Sure. Well, I'm lucky in that, you know, I can... Uh, I can afford to do what I want when I want to do it, and I worked hard to do that. Um, but let me tell you, and anybody who's got small kids knows what I'm talking about. Just because I'm, just because I'm working on a song doesn't mean my daughter's not going to come in and want to show me a toy or my son wants to talk about Speed Racer or something. So you just learn to navigate your time. Um, one thing we talked about, because um, certainly my partner sometimes experiences some, some remorse about not being able to be there for the kids like she would like, you know, w one of the things we talk about is trying to provide a positive example for our children, what it means to pursue your dream, what it means to work hard. And so we try to le also lead by example, so we try to find that balance. But, you know, one thing during this pandemic, we spent a lot of time with our kids, and I think that's something we'll, I don't think we'll ever regret, especially when they're at this magical age of, of five and two. Yeah, I mean, that's like the best, I, I think that might be for parents, one of the biggest gifts is just having that time to be with your kids and to like play fort and set up, a, you know, a tent and lights in a sure. living room just to goof around and be a kid yourself. Again. Yeah, and it's hard because, you know, sometimes my son comes to me and, and, and says, what does the virus look like? You know, uh, he's, he's trying to understand what he's even supposed to be afraid of. And it's sad because, you know, you don't want him thinking about that type of stuff. But yeah, you have to ride that balance of telling him yeah. the truth and letting him be a kid, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the other day, he asked me about like what what God looked like and could God stop the virus and you know, deep kid, right? Wow. So, um, yeah. So you know, I don't know. It's weird. I think a lot of people are experiencing what I'm experiencing. It's like sort of a mixture of good and bad. Sure. Um, many people I talk to really have tried to make the best of it. You know, people are going back to the thing they they wish they had time for. They're painting again, or they're you know, they're taking long walks through the woods and, you know, they are, because they're able to work from home, they're able to spend more time with their pets and things like that. So I think it's a, I think it's a mixed thing, but I think all of us, of course, would like to go back to where we have an option. Have you rediscovered anything? I mean, you've mentioned a bunch of things, so I know I might be going to the well, but has there been something that you've rediscovered, even just something subtle that you're like, oh yeah, I haven't thought about that since I was 16 or 17 or done anything like that? Or you kind of always been that guy? No, no, I'm, I'm an indulgent person. So. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm the lucky musician that, that figured it out so that I could do what I love, which is to which is to make music, and then I could do all the other things that I want to do, which is sit and stare out a window if I feel like it. So, Fantastic. Um, um, for people who want information about uh, openings and uh, websites for the Tea House. Uh, fo you know, follow us on, uh, on the social media. MadamZuzus.com is our website. Uh, we mostly post on Instagram, which is, I think, just at MadamZuzus. Uh, I certainly post about Zuzus and stuff, and then uh, we also have some things coming up as far as pumpkins go, as things we're going to be offering through the through the tea house exclusively. So, uh, just follow us. It's a good it's a good vibe. Awesome, Billy. Thank you very much for uh, hanging out on Halloween. I appreciate it very much. Yeah. We'll see you later. All right, so that's the Chicago scene for today. T B A R N A S at W G N T V dot com. That's T Barnes at W G N T V dot com. I'll see you guys later. Happy Halloween. <laughs>